All right, hello guys. Uh, we're gonna do a short little tutorial. Here we go, let's spin this around. Hi guys, my name is Rob Teeter over here at Teeter's Telescopes. We're going to do a uh, short uh, tutorial, as I was starting to say, uh, with this 20 inch telescope uh, that's here in the lobby of the TT Workshop on how to uh, do uh, a setup of the Sky Commander and ServoCat systems in the field. So essentially, uh, assuming that the telescope is set up outside and we've got it all assembled. Now we're just trying to set up these two systems here to uh, get us going for the evening for some go-to and some tracking. All right, so uh, first thing we're gonna do uh, with the telescope here is uh, make sure that we've got good battery connection. All right, so we wanna make sure everything's getting electricity here. So let's go on this particular telescope to the front. Uh, this one has a battery on the front of the rocker box. And then it also has a battery inside here on the floor of the rocker box. All right, so uh, those have cables coming off of them. They're bringing power into the various uh, parts of the telescope. This battery here is bringing power to the, let's tip this up a little bit, to the dew buster box. And that dew buster box is actually splitting power out to uh, the cooling fans. Uh, the battery inside of the box is the one powering the servo cat system. All right, so we wanna make sure everything's plugged in there and getting power, so that's step number one. Uh, step number two is to come over here and look at the back of the telescope. We're going to look at the servo cat box. Here we go. And uh, we can just make out here that we've got two lights on. Uh, one is an orange light and one is a green light. All right, so that means we've got good connection so far. Uh, we need one more light to come on. That would be a red light. And uh, that comes on after we turn the Sky Commander system on here. We're going to hit the button underneath. Okay, so that's going to go on. We know it's on because it now says set the date. Let's come back over here. We're going to take a look down here. We now see a flashing or blinking red light. That means that the Servo Cat and Sky Commander systems are communicating between one another, but that the Sky Commander system isn't quite 100% set up yet which is right because we haven't given it the date, nor have we done the two-star alignment yet. Once we do all that, then that red light will become a steady red light, and that's the best thing, because then everything is 100% working. All right, so let's do that. Let's go through the process of setting all that up. So first thing we want to do here is we've got four keys, four arrow keys. They're going to allow us to toggle between different dates. We could set here, so uh, right now it's October. We could also toggle over and do uh, the day. All right, so we're going to leave that to the uh, 18th. All right, so up and down allows us to toggle between the different numbers. All right, and then right and left toggles us between month, day, and year, and back and forth All right, with these numbers. So once we've got the date proper in there, now we want to hit the return key. This little return arrow here, this is actually your enter key. So we're going to touch that. All right, so that says calculating planets, wait. All right, so the default first star that it goes to is Polaris. And that's always a good uh, one to pick to do the alignment on uh, with this telescope. All right, and actually any, any telescope that we've found so far, Polaris is always the best one to start off with. So, we're gonna grab the telescope ma manually and move it. Now before we do that, we wanna go down here and just make sure that the two axes for the altitude, the up and down, and the azimuth on the bottom, right and left, 360, are disengaged. So that means that this red knob is pointing outward, and that this knob down here actually is the opposite. This one's pointing inward, essentially. It's at a 90 degree angle. All right, that means the telescope is able to be freewheeled right and left, and then up and down manually. All right, with them engaged, now engaged, the telescope has no freedom of movement manually. I could pull on it and move it and grab it. The telescope is not going to move anywhere because now it's locked out and it's up to the motors to move it. All right, so when you're doing your two-star alignment, you always want to make sure this is in and that this is out, okay? And I say that because this is the easiest way to move the telescope great distances, 
All right, so here we go. All right, we're moving it, we're moving it. We're moving it. All right, so we're gonna pretend that we just moved it way over here, pointing to the north now to roughly here in New Jersey, 41 degrees up for Polaris. We're gonna have an eyepiece in here. Uh, pick a fairly high magnification eyepiece. Uh, you want one that's gonna give you a lot, like two or 300 power uh, in there so that when you center the star, it's centered in a very narrow field of view. Uh, the other neat little trick is to take and uh, use your focuser here and rack the eyepiece way out of focus, bring it way back so that instead of a little tiny pinpoint star, you get the big giant donut in there in the focuser or in the eyepiece. Uh, and that's a lot easier to center that giant out of focus star in the field of view of your eyepiece than trying to center a little tiny star. Um, you could also do a crosshair eyepiece uh, in the focuser. So the tighter you can get this alignment, for when you're centered on Polaris, the better your pointing accuracy will be. So definitely take your time here. All right, so let's say for example, we've got it all centered up on Polaris. We're very happy with that. I'm gonna come back to the Sky Commander system and we're gonna hit this key here. Again, your return or enter key. There we go, now it jumps to saying sight second star. Now using your up and down keys here, you can toggle through all the different stars in the database. We're gonna pick, um, let's pick Vega. Or actually, um, let's do it this way, let's pick Spica. All right, so we just toggled to it, up and down. We didn't hit any of the keys yet, we just toggled to where it says Spica, done. Now we're gonna take the telescope again, grab the end of it, and push it, push, 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 push. Push the telescope, we're going around and around and around to get the spica, which during the day is right about here, down a little bit, over this way, it's right about there. All right, so again, centered in the eyepiece really well. Bang, zoom, done. Over here, we're not gonna go back to hitting this key right here. Done, okay. Now, what the Sky Commander does is it defaults to the top line being right ascension declination. All right, that doesn't mean a lot to us Dobsonian users. We want alt as or altitude azimuth. So first thing you're gonna do after it brings up this screen is hit the up key. The up key now switches it to azimuth and altitude, all right, which is exactly what we're looking for here. It's a little bit easier to comprehend. All right, so it defaults to Messier object number one. Say we don't want to see Messier number one, so we want to see Messier 53. We're going to use the right key, toggle to the second number there, second from the right, and now we're going to hit the up key to switch it to 50. Now back to that one to get it under the one, and then up to three. We're going to hit enter. Okay. So now it's telling us that the telescope has to go 22.5 degrees up and 332 degrees this way, or well, really what we're trying to do is get to 360 degrees, so it's actually only got to do 30 degrees to get to 360 the short way. All right, so we could move the telescope manually. We could just grab it and push it. That would be push to, to get the telescope to go to all zeros. That means we're centered on the object. All right, or the whole reason we have the servo cat or half the reason potentially, is that we have this neat little green key here says that says go to. So we're going to push that in. We're going to take this one out, straight out. All right, right there. And again, that one's in all the way. Telescope's locked out manually, we can't move it. And we're gonna hit this green key here that says go to. Okay, the telescope did a go-to. We come back here, and now it is reading pretty darn close to all zeros. 360 degree point zero and zero zero point one. Um, so that point one is a tenth of a degree, a very small amount. And if we really wanted to fine tune that, we've got some different speed settings here on this hand pad. Slew is really fast, jog is a little bit slower, and then these two here are what you'd use in the eyepiece, all right, to refine 
your tracking and your go-to to center up uh, an object. So say we want to hit that one, we press that button. And then if we want to do the up and down to center that better, there we go. So now, all zeros, point 0.1, there we go. So we could chase that around all we want uh, to get it to be all zeros, but as long as it's somewhere in that field of view in the eyepiece, then we're really good up there. All right, so normally with a go-to, you'd use, you'd use a middle magnification eyepiece, um, something, you know, like a 17 or 18 millimeter, and uh, with this uh, type of system, you could expect uh, that object to be in that field of view of that eyepiece uh, without a problem. Um, and then uh, for tracking wise, you could expect that to be in there for half an hour to 45 minutes uh, to an hour, really, um, or even longer at, at that medium power, higher power, it might drift a little bit, um, you know, but uh, at medium powers, uh, the objects are going to be in there for almost as long as you want. Uh, if you're doing like a public night and you got a lot of people online looking at the same object, this is a great system to have. All right, so we are now all set up here. This is tracking. We're still at all zeros. All right, while I was giving my spiel there, uh, the system is tracking. And that's a good thing. You want this to be all zeros. All right, that means the system, the ServoCat system, is moving the telescope such that the encoders for this system are reading all zeroed out, which means we're centered on the object. And then uh, let's just go back down here real quick uh, to confirm that the red light is steady. So that means we have good communication between the ServoCat and Sky Commander systems on here. Okay, last thing I want to do is just explain where some of the cabling is going on here, because we do have some wires to deal with. Uh, coming out of the Sky Commander, we have uh, this larger, uh, almost like an Ethernet cable. It's a big, wide cable. And then we've got a smaller, almost like a telephone wire that's labeled DSC. These two plugs are two different sizes. So this cable only fits in here, and this cable only fits in here. All right, so I can't really mess that one up. Uh, and then here, for the hand pad, you've got a coiled cable, All right, which means you could pull this off and bring it with you up to the eyepiece when you get up on your ladder to look through the eyepiece to refine uh, the tracking in there. All right, so that can just go back on there with Velcro. Again, the coiled cable. And this coiled cable goes down and around, and it plugs into, let's see if we can see it here. There's a, uh, like a junction box here. So the coiled cable goes up, plugs into one end here, and then the other end is this cable, which comes out, goes around, and goes down into the stalk, and then down to there. So all these cables actually come out and go down and go through this bundle of cables and come out. The only other cable to mention is this one here. This is your power cable to power the Sky Commander so that it's being powered off of the big batteries on the front of the telescope and on the inside. So that goes down. That all comes down through here and comes out down here. And now these are nice because these are four cables that are all different sizes. So no problems plugging this one or this one or this one or this one into the wrong slot because they only fit in one place. All right, so these on the right always stay connected because they're the ones that go around and then up. These on the left come out and then go into your box and go through and run into the various places inside of the telescope. All right, so here we are. The telescope is tracking. It did a go-to. We could toggle between different objects. We can go back here and toggle through the different categories, NGC objects, UGC, all the different catalogs in the Sky Commander. All the different ones, and then again, your keypad here, this moves the telescope up, this moves it down, counterclockwise, clockwise, you've got your four different speed settings, your go-to button, your two search buttons here in case the go-to isn't successful, and you have to find the object manually. This will actually move the telescope around, and then you can stop it once it's found it, so it moves the telescope in predictable circles. And then once you see it in the eyepiece, you can hit the button. You can hit the button and then it'll stop moving. And then this local sync button, you can read about that in the manual with its many uses. 
So that's it. So hopefully that gets you up and running pretty quick in the field as to how to get the two systems working and talking to one another. Uh, any questions, feel free to give me a call or drop me a line by email. All right, thanks a lot. Take care. Bye.